right in the smoker and you know like yeah. this yeah thing. Okay. On interviewing Denny F. This is January twenty third, nineteen ninety-two. And when did you serve? What years did you serve in the legislature? I was appointed and elected in nineteen eighty. Eight years, so I served from 81 to 89. Good. Okay. And so, okay. So I mean, you, my term would have ended. Okay. Already. And you were in the House the whole time, right? That's correct. Okay. And you're a Republican, right? That's correct. Have you always been a Republican? Yes. When did you affiliate with the Republican Party, and why? Well, I uh, affiliated. No, I wasn't active in the party probably when I was 18 or 19 and at that time lived in Illinois oh. and I um, had seen some fairly unusual democratic uh, politics in the Chicago area. I lived in a suburb and uh, I lived in DuPage County, which was primarily Republican, and Cook County, of course, where Chicago is, is Democrat. So I think that's where I first okay, so became. You, you chose to be a Republican, it wasn't somebody in your family or somebody like that? that no, my father it. was a Republican, but I don't know. There was no pressure yeah. on me okay. whatsoever. Okay, so you registered to vote first as a Republican. Mm -hmm. but okay. it, at that time, one had to be 21. <laughs> right. Instead of 18. Okay. Um, you were elected in, in 80. Uh -huh. In the election of 80. Okay. Can you describe this election and how you feel you were elected? What was it you did in the election? The campaign? That well, I campaigned very hard. Uh, I had been a local school board member in. Um, Iola for 13 years, was president of the board the entire time, so I had been relatively visible, and then I was on the state board of education for two years and then run for that. Uh, the thing that I had to fight was, uh, particularly the rural area, that, gee, Denny Apt's a nice lady, and gee, she knows education, but can she represent agriculture? So I uh, immediately set up a business advisory committee and an agriculture advisory committee mm. who were very helpful to me, did a lot of touring of all kinds of farms and went out and said, uh, I need help, but I want to learn to represent you. And so it turned out I was put on the agriculture committee, so that was helpful oh, too. Yeah, yeah. Did you stay in on it? Okay, um, why did you decide to run the first time? I was fascinated by the process as a local board member and I was president of the school board association. I began uh, to do a lot of testifying, the same thing yeah. with the state board. So I became very interested in the process. The incumbent became ill and uh, I had some urging, but it didn't take much urging to, mm -hmm. to file timing, and run. Everything. Yes, I did. What, when did you file? What month or what day? Did you wait till the last minute? Or it was the first time it was fairly uh, last minute. Probably the middle of June. Mm -hmm. Okay, who encouraged you to do this, to decide to run? And well, any number of uh, people in the area, uh, pretty much a cross-section. But as I say, it didn't take a lot of urging. I, you were already so involved, were you? I was never very good at arts and crafts, as all my friends were. And all of a sudden, I found politics. And that was something that I loved and that I thought I could do. <laughs> so I, I've been accused of being a political junkie, and I think that's true. I, I love it. No, it's a good reason. Uh, did anyone, uh, any of the people that encouraged you then, did any of them help you specifically? Were there any groups of people or organizations you belonged to that 
that one by you. No right? women's group. Women. No. No women's group. Interesting. No, yeah, very interesting. No, men elected me. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't. No, okay. I'm sure I had yeah. support, but if you recall, at that time, uh, it was more unusual mm -hmm. for a woman right. to be doing this, and particularly in a relatively mm -hmm. small How rural many women were in the house? Can you the year I was elected, uh, there were 23 of us, and don't hold me to mm -hmm. that exact, but as I recall, there were 23, mm -hmm. which was the same number as all the collection of women previous to yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's mm -hmm. just about what we found, too. Mm -hmm. well, now, this is kind of out of order, but one of the questions we're trying to find the answer to is uh, what happened in 1974? Because prior to 74, there were only four women ever in the yeah. house. And after 74, there was just a mushrooming, a snowball effect number. Can you think of anything that might, you probably were around here then. Can you think of anything that might have happened then that uh, created the atmosphere or promoted that happening? Well, I think it was a time uh, when women began to think we can do something else. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm trying to remember back when I first ran for the school board in '65. I think there was something like 10 or 13 school board members that were women. Across the state. Uh huh. But, oh, yeah, it was, oh, but there just was a realization that I can do that. I think at the time, if you will look at the ages of those that ran, it was probably more middle age, middle class women uh, as I was when I ran. Had my kids raised. I, uh, yep. Had some guilt going off and leaving my husband and family, but I wasn't leaving children leaving at home, yes. and uh, that those of my age and ilk, about the mid 70s, mm -hmm. said, let's try something else. But I can't give you a specific. Yeah, well, uh, that's, that's close. I mean, that's important. Uh, Okay, you're, you said you're, the incumbent became ill. Who did you run against then? Did the incumbent run in that election? Or, uh, uh, he did not. Okay. Uh, he had filed and withdrew. Okay. And I did have uh, opposition in the general. Okay. Uh, uh, was it a hard campaign, a hard fought campaign? Or? I campaigned very hard. Uh, probably harder might have needed to. Mm -hmm. uh, that area at that time was a strong Republican area. That's, the numbers have shifted some, s somewhat, but I, I was serious about it. I wanted to win, and uh, I was fighting a nice lady butt kind of uh, situation. Mm. That's interesting. Well, then you you ran. Did you run against have any women at all in the in your elections as you ran? No, I, uh, well, the I other three times I didn't have any opposition oh. at all, which was oh, wonderful well, because I really am not crazy about campaigning, yeah. and it was just wonderful to go around yeah. and be a stateswoman rather than a campaign. But I always uh, attended all the. Parades and Ellsmore Day and Moran Day and all in the off years because I didn't want anyone to ever say mm -hmm. she just shows up when she's running for office. And I thought that my constituents had a right to expect me to be at those functions, which meant a great deal to them. So yeah. falls were busy <laughs> hitting on me. Uh, did you do a lot of door to door? Or I didn't do any. Did you didn't do any door to door. Okay. Did you use them? Oh, yes, I did. I, I beg your pardon. I did go door to door my first election, and I uh, targeted the independents and Democrats. Oh. 
making a slight assumption that perhaps I had the Republican vote in that hmm. I needed mean, to cross over. Uh, not completely, but mm -hmm. I and I I selected registered voters so that I could move more rapidly. And so you really targeted who you wanted to follow? Yes. Did you use the media? Yes, uh, not television. Mm -hmm. uh, I used radio and newspaper ads, yard signs, mm -hmm. uh, and mailings, mm -hmm. which were personalized. Uh, and then I signed them all. They were all hand-addressed envelopes. Mm -hmm. Didn't do, use labels. And when I went door to door, uh, I'd follow up with a little postcard. Oh. Nice to visit with you. Uh, your flowers were pretty. Or, mm. I tried to make a note when I went back mm. to the car that of something that could be a little. Mm, that's interesting. That also takes a lot of work. <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, I had a good friend who's, who was unfortunate for her because her husband just left her. But it was fortunate for me because she was very much at loose ends and got very involved. Hi. Okay. My campaign would drive me when I went door to door. And that, that was nice. And that, yeah, so it <laughs> sounds terrible. No, no. I told her it, it was unfortunate, but the timing was yeah. good. I, I would kid her about yeah. it. Well, did she help you in subsequent, subsequent mm -hmm. campaigns? Then? Yes. Oh, that always helps to have someone like that. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you finance your first campaign and campaigns after? Well, you didn't probably have a campaign to start after. Uh, well, as it turned out, I didn't have a primary, and I did uh, one mailing and had some support. I didn't hold a fundraiser mm -hmm. because I had been involved under the dome with these other activities, knew several of the PAC people who uh, did contribute. Mm -hmm. And some of the women reported they had trouble raising funds, and they thought maybe they had more trouble than the men because they were women you didn't experience that. No, no, in fact, I was very fortunate. How did the media treat you? Did any of the newspapers or radio very stations? Well. Or very newspapers well. Very well. They endorsed you and everything? Uh, my editor at home endorsed me, mm. and uh, the radio station didn't do endorsements, but were most supportive. And nobody did support it. No, I, I had no trouble in that way. Good. Whatsoever. Perchance, uh, did a relative very close friend of yours precede you in the house that's been in any type of elective office like that that might have influenced you to run? Or no. However, my father-in-law, and I have to look up the dates, uh, and it's got to be 60-some years ago, did serve in the Senate. Oh. But he did was... Did you know him? Yeah, I knew him. My he father. Was before you were. Oh yeah, and he alive, was dead yeah. before. He had before you elected, so he didn't work no. for your campaign. No. Uh, can you describe your district a little bit and what it was like? What type of? Uh, well, it's um, a primarily rural area. Iola is the largest city, a city of between seven and eight thousand. So it's uh, quite rural. Uh, it's a. At that time, it was perhaps better than half Republican, quarter Democrat, and quarter Independent. I mean, uh -huh. it, it has shifted. Uh, the people are interesting in that uh, you're almost always damned if you do and damned if you don't. It's about 50% moderate and 50% quite conservative. I mean, in the politics, uh, it has nothing uh -huh. to do with it. Uh -huh. So, uh, but I, I really was always greeted with uh, kindness. Uh, I, one always has uh, a few that are not pleasant, but for the most part, I, I was very comfortable representing them, and I, hopefully they were comfortable with me when they re-elected me three times without opposition. Yeah, so. yeah that's an indication for sure. Well, what issues, and you mentioned agriculture, was, 
were issues, these people were agriculturally oriented. What other issues were interested? Were they interested in during the years you served? Well, of course, education, which okay. has always been one of my big interests. The severance tags was a major issue okay. uh, when I was in the house, uh -huh. and uh, I decided on the side of the opponents of the severance tax. So that became a big issue, some of the tax exemptions for agriculture, because mm -hmm. the city folks didn't want the exemptions. And mm -hmm. uh, I voted for them. And frankly, how I handled it at my chamber and those kind of meetings, my husband and his family has substantial agricultural interest. And so Fred is kind of uh, substantial, but they have some farm. And uh, so he's a landlord. And I pointed out to the groups that Fred F. didn't like what I had done either because it was not, it was helpful to the farmer, but not the landlord, which usually seemed to get me off the hook and we yeah. went on to something else. It was uh, not as difficult a time as it is now. Uh, money was short, but uh, it was not impossible. I remember the battle over the increasing the sales tax, and then Governor Hayden had to come in even after we had done that and uh, make the cuts. But interesting on that, and I was one that led the charge in the House for the, in Joan Wagner for the increase in the sales tax. It was never an issue in my next campaign. One person spoke to me about it, and that person has a number of movie theaters, and of course, mm -hmm. must eat that increase. No one else hmm. ever brought it up. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm talking too much. No, but you're supposed to be talking. <laughs> this is great. What uh, kind of issues, then, you've, you've named some, but uh, what other kind of issues, or what issues did you kind of spearhead and do spills for? Uh, well, I uh, introduced, uh, I was very interested in uh, selective admissions and introduced in education. in education for the selective admissions mm -hmm. for the region's institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, I introduced some women's issues bills, particularly okay. one on credit. Uh, but did that, that pass? Didn't it? It didn't? Not at that time. Um, it's interesting that both of those issues are still around, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, it has it's been a number of years. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to, well, I, I signed on to some bills, and I had um, one bill in for um, fingerprinting babies for the missing children. Oh, yeah. And now, was that the one that passed? Or the not at that time. That I came back and did, did it? Or I, it didn't pass. Did I am watching some of the things that I introduced roll around. Right now, there is a high school warning act in for education, which I put in about six years ago, hmm. the same concept. Not expecting passage, but sometimes you're a little ahead of your time, maybe. <laughs> well, um, now some people like to say, you know, these issues are women's issues, and I hesitate to even do that. But do you think you were mainly involved with women's issues? Doesn't sound like it. You. Let me tell you when I told Clarence Love. Uh, do you remember Clarence? Mm -hmm. uh, for the record. Uh, a black legislator from Wyandotte County, and he came up to me in a reception, and he said, well, I think we have another woman in the house. Yes, Clarence. Uh, he said, I suppose you're here for children's issues. And I said, Clarence, I am interested in children's issues and children. I went to trouble of having three. But I tell you what, I would believe that you're here for something besides civil rights legislation if you will believe I'm here for something besides women and children's issues. He said, okay, Danny, and we always got along beautifully. That's, that's a good story. That's great. I did not go 
we had off and on a woman's cock, and mm -hmm. I didn't attend it, mm -hmm. except one time when they needed to elect somebody to go to something. I felt I was there as a legislator, and I wanted to be treated as a legislator, and I would have been furious if the men had won and excluded mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And I had just as much in common with my men colleagues as I did the women. Uh, I so, understand that. No. Well, so, hey, I, if you could pin a label on yourself, and we don't like to do that, but we'll let you do it to yourself anyway. How would you describe yourself as liberal, conservative, or what? I'm a moderate. moderate. You're a moderate. Okay. And the label they pinned on me in the legislature was Mother App. <laughs> they used to say, you don't mess with Mother Nature or Mother App. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> I didn't have a label. Oh, that's interesting. I was a freshman legislator then when you first came up here, what, in 80, the session of 80? It would be the session of 81. I was 81, like, yeah, that's yeah, right. 81, you were elected in November 80. 81. Who was your mentor? Did you have somebody who kind of mentored you and helped I you get had, on the right committees? And oh, well, no, I was, uh, as far as getting on the right committee, I was already on the then speaker's bad list. Uh, because I had worked before I was elected for the, his opponent. Mm -hmm. So, no, the, the speaker was not fond of me. Mm -hmm. But yes, I had several wonderful mentors by choice. I sat on the back row and loved it. And, uh, of course, I knew Don Crumbaker. He was always been my wonderful friend and mentor. I knew Joe Harder, mm -hmm. who has been my wonderful friend and mentor. I had Cliff Campbell, whom I adore, sitting beside me helping, and at that time Bill Beasley on the other side, and Rochelle Conister was a good friend of mine. So, uh, and there were any number of others that helped me. I quickly became acquainted with Bill Wisdom, who held on the other end of our back row, Cliff and I, and Bill sat on the mm -hmm. Democrat yeah. side, and Bill Wisdom was a good mentor and friend. What committees did you serve in? Did you stay on the same committees during the, the eight years? Or? The first year I was on elections, agriculture, education, and then the first two years, mm -hmm. and uh, then when the speaker changed. <laughs> I did stay on agriculture. I was uh, no longer on elections and was uh, appointed chairman of the Legislative Education Planning Committee, which is a joint committee. Mm -hmm. And so, and then I was on education. Did you hold any positions? Yeah, I became vice chairman of the House Education Committee and then Chairman, mm -hmm. and I alternated Chairman, Vice Chairmanship on the Legislative Education Planning Committee because one year Senate yeah. and the House. How many women Chairman were there at that time? At that time, I, I was the only one in the House. So I was thinking there weren't hardly any others. Now you've already sort of talked about this, but did you participate in any formal, informal coalitions? Now you said, you talked about the women's conference. Were there any others that you... <laughs> that I didn't join? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there were a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I was part of the back row bunch. <laughs> and, of course, a member of the party and worked very closely with a lot of uh, rural people. Uh, my first year, I worked very closely with Denny Burgess and uh, we formed a coalition of what we called the Cowboys <laughs> and uh, so that would be an informal group uh, with whom I Were you worked. the only woman in that group? No, Rochelle. Was. That's right. She was, yeah. yeah she, uh, she even mentioned that I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had all sorts of agendas, which may remain <laughs> private. <laughs> yeah. uh, what were three or four 
two or three major victories or defeats or things you remember that really stand out in your memory about your years in the legislature? Well, um, as you know, in the legislature, sometimes there are very small victories that mean nothing to anyone else, but mm -hmm. you got the bill passed, you got the bill killed. I think the first bill that I got through the process, uh, which was not any kind of a major bill, but it said Representative Ann, and you know, it wasn't easy to get it through, and when that was signed, I was... What was that bill? It was a bill uh, that had to do with unused property that school districts had, and up to that time they had to go through this very convoluted process, and this just really allowed school boards to tend to it, which is one, and uh, so that was fun. There was some opposition from the school board association. Uh, I did overcome and had some ups and downs. And Senator Carter happened not to be in committee when my bill came up. The bill got amended and killed. He came in. Another friend on the Senate committee said, we killed Danny's bill, and it somehow got revived and passed. <laughs> so that was a major. I mean, you know, that was exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You do learn the process by participating. Well, I mean, there are lots of there are more defeats, I think, mm -hmm. than victories. But when I would carry school finance and get it off the floor and then get it out of conference committee, that was always a major victory. Oh, Somewhat like giving birth. I oh mean, yeah, that is amazing. painful. Yes, yes. Uh, why did you end your legislative service? I ran for the Senate and lost. Um, are you a native? I'm going to ask you a few questions about you personally. Now we kind of tie this together. <laughs> <laughs> until I was 17, so the fact that I'm even bearable uh, <laughs> is uh, interesting. But I lived in a little suburb uh, about 1,300, 1,400. So it was like living in a small town. Everyone yeah. knew when the difference of there and here is that the daddies went to work mm -hmm. somewhere else. Mm -hmm. They got on trains and commuted. In fact, I took the train to high school. Oh, goodness. Uh -huh. so uh, what did your father do? He was an accountant with the American Can mm -hmm. Company. And I had the good fortune to go to a wonderful uh, high school that was really geared for college preparation. It was mm -hmm. outstanding. And it was only a high school of about 400. Mm -hmm. but did you participate in debate or what kind of activities? Well, I had my nose in everything, not debate. I didn't, I, uh, and I never took speech because I was never going to give speeches. <laughs> but uh, I was president of the Girl Reserves and this and that. And so you were president of the junior class and, uh, yes, I had my nose in everything. Are there any other organizations outside the school that you don't belong to at that time in your life? Well, I was a Girl Scout, but then, frankly, when I got in high school, I was so involved uh, that, and had all these wonderful friends. And mm -hmm. it was, but you were up to that time in Girl Scouts. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's Oh, I joined in. <laughs> I know, so yeah. came along. Yeah. 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 Uh, did you go to college? I went to Iowa State mm -hmm. for one year and then transferred to the University of Arkansas. I don't have my degree. I went to Iowa State to take chemical engineering oh my and did go on a scholarship. My folks, after I graduated from high school, moved to Arkansas, bought a chicken ranch, was not oh terribly goodness. successful. And so the next year I went to Arkansas, which was my state school, and mm -hmm. I couldn't afford 
to oh. finish, and it was before the days of loans and you yeah. know, other things. It's a difference. Uh, now, after you graduated from high school and went college, did you join any organizations then? I mean, at, since from then to now, have you been part of any organizations, any women's organizations, church organizations, or anything that were, you were real active? Uh, well, I was Sunday school superintendent uh, mm -hmm. for a number of years and uh, still belong as an inactive member to a club in Iowa called Unity Club, which is a study club. Is that a federated club? No, no, okay. no it is. It is not. Uh, I was on the Kansas Children's Service League Board of Directors. Mm -hmm. uh, on, on when my youngest started, uh, kindergarten is when I ran for the local board, and of course I became very involved in that on a, a local, state, and national level. I also, at the same time, served on the Iowa uh, Library Board, and on the first uh, interlibrary loan board in Kansas, because we were a pilot, in fact, we were one of the first in the nation. We have an outstanding library. Uh, so those are the things uh, I enjoyed and still do the more civic kind of things. I, uh, I am happy for those that like to quilt and do those things. That's wonderful. I wish I did. Yeah. Uh, but I, I like to be involved in things that I guess I can see some results. And my quilting would be a nightmare. <laughs> Okay. When um, you were married then, what year? We were married in '51. Okay. And when and you had children when you were in the when you went to the legislature, but you said they were girls. How old were your children when you were first elected to the legislature? Well, you're gonna have to. Let's see. Dirk will be 39. He was uh, probably. Maybe I should start with Richard. He was 60. He was 20. Our youngest was 20. So our daughter was 23. So uh, our oldest son would have been 26. So they were all grown in, in college or out of the household. Yes. Anyway. yes. Okay. And you have two sons and a daughter. That's right. A son on each. to run, and one of them was that I had turned 50. I, I had never, uh, I kid you not, I had never minded a birthday, and 50 was just traumatic to me. I was never 49, I was going on 50. Now when I hit 59, I was smarter, you know, I stayed 59. And the day after my 50th birthday, which was in December, and I got up and I thought, well, you don't look too bad, and what are you going to do with the last half century of your life and that's when I really started to be serious. No. Hmm. I ran was elected when I was here. Hmm. Okay, well that's a, a different age. This session now, it seems like everyone is 37 when they're elected. Now I can't tell you why, but that, that's a little different. So maybe this is a trend to get younger. Oh, I think it is yeah. because you see younger women, much younger women and um, with younger children, and I was certainly not the youngest <laughs> of those that yeah. were elected, but uh, well, you were with me, but you were about average. Mm -hmm. When you came uh, down here that first session, did you stay in Topeka? And, oh yeah. And your husband, did he come at all? He came to see me this morning, and mm -hmm. he came up once to go to a K-State basketball game. He has come up very little. I. I, would, I had an apartment, I'd go home weekend, mm -hmm. and uh, it, he is an attorney, and if he had a court case or yeah. a hearing or something, he would come up, but he didn't, he didn't campaign with me, and didn't, he likes to stay home, okay. <laughs> well, you and know, he understands that his wife is a gypsy, I mean, yeah. that's just, yeah. He supports you, but he doesn't want to be, yeah, don't, 
make me get on those airplanes in two hours. <laughs> well, do you think that your service to the legislature changed you or your life, or was it your 50th birthday? <laughs> well, it's a combination there. Yes, I think it did. One thing that it taught me is, with particularly working with constituents, that you don't have to put up with some of the things that the public puts up with, and I know my preposition is on the end. I would call an agency on behalf of a constituent, and I would call and say, this is Danny Ab, and get put on hold. I would call up then and say, this is Representative Denise Ab, and get right in, and that's not right. Not that legislators shouldn't be accommodated, but the general public, and I suppose I was a much more pleasant person before then, uh, because I learned you just don't have to put up with injustices or disservice, and and I'm certainly probably a lot tougher. Mm -hmm. well, you think it changed how people perceive you? Uh, Oh, even your children or your husband or anybody you're being in the legislature? Oh, I think so, probably at home. My husband is, uh, I'm the quiet, calm one in our family, so that gives you a picture of our family. Mm -hmm. And I always said that the people in Iola thought I was a deaf mute <laughs> because we talked so much and they found out I wasn't. Yeah, it, it certainly <laughs> made a difference. My children have always been supportive, and some of the things that I've done is, have not been easy for Fred or the children. Mm -hmm. you know, I loved what I was doing, but they got some of the backlash. Do you think they, they made any sacrifices? Do you feel like it affected them? As well, by the time I ran for the legislature, they'd had to go through life going yeah. to school with their mother president and school board, and at that point, they realize that they have a mother with some energy and they like to see a channel somewhere besides them. <laughs> it's wonderful. When I lost my election, uh, and you know, this is not fun, but the children would keep calling and I know they were saying, what are we going to do with mother? And when uh, Governor Hayden appointed me as his educational advisor, they were thrilled, you know, it's like, oh, God, you got a job for Mom. The first week I was there and I was sitting in a conference and Mike said, um, you want to say something then, you know? I can tell you want to say something. I said, well, I'm either going to have to sit on the other side of this table or we're going to rehang these pictures. And Mike left to do it. Uh, well, I foolishly told one of the children, well, then they're on the phone, oh my God, mother is going to get fired, she told the governor, you know, not, so, yeah, yeah. So, I think my school board uh, experiences probably were a greater sacrifice for them. They were gone, and it was kind of fun to have them on the legislature. Yeah, that would be that They visit you down here? And, yeah. yeah. Um, Fred has been always supportive, and he did take a lot of flag for decisions that he wouldn't have made, but he's in the courthouse yeah, and around yeah. the square, and, and I was doing what the man in the family would do. <laughs> mm -hmm. and yep. so, I mentioned that's true. Well, do you think women, in your experience, and you were there when there was a big growth in the number of women, do you think women as a whole are good legislators and have been? I mean, as you look at them, not just yourself. I think some are and some aren't. There's some good men legislators and there's some poor ones. And then being I, female has nothing to I do I don't with think them. it has a thing to do with it. I think it is the person. The only thing that a woman, and it may be better now, but suffered from at first is somehow we were expected to know everything about everything. If we didn't, well, uh, you know, kind of a dumb woman, whereas a dumb man was excused. <laughs> you know, well, that's not his field or, mm -hmm. you know, but I think some of that's changing. You think it is changing? I think In so. In what but way? Well, hopefully as, <laughs> as everyone grows and experiences, I love that grows, uh, that they are learning that people are people. The way I've always felt. 
and that's the way I would treat I will say my men colleagues were wonderful. When I walked out the door, they treated me as a lady, and I was not someone that didn't want my coat held or the door open. When I was on the floor, I was one of the fellows, and that's the way they treated me, though they were very careful not to tell off colored jokes or use uh, obscene language. But you know, they, they treated me like one of them, and I had to be tough, I had to be tough, but they had to be tough. I knew they'd keep their word, and they knew I would. So, so they were great. I well, what do you think is going to happen next with women? You know, legislature. Do you think the number will keep growing? Or? Yes. No, well, it's going to be interesting in the next few years. And uh, just as I would say about men, if there isn't a good mix of women and background and experience and professions, then the legislature won't profit from that any more than we need all attorneys or all farmers or all uh, in the case of men. Well, that's probably really true. Is there anything, any questions I didn't ask you that you were expecting me to? No, I hadn't. That's part I hadn't thought about, and I knew I'd talk too much anyway. No, great. You're really... Um, we're talking about Kansas specifically, yeah. and not being a native Kansan, but it is my theory that women are well accepted in positions of authority in Kansas, partly because Kansas was a pioneer state, and the women plowed and uh, farmed and did everything because they had to. But I also believe that in Kansas, the attitude is do it. Don't make a big to-do about it, or you're not the token woman, or this and that. If you can do it, and at the time I was elected to the legislature, we had in Iowa the first woman county commissioner. And um, so I think Kansas is a good environment yeah. for women to succeed, but not not with a defensive chip on the shoulder. I need to be allowed to do this because.